In any series that has a lot of female characters in its cast, the question of who is best girl is inevitable to arise. Love Live is no exception. Ask any fan of this series who their favorite character is and you're bound to get a myriad of responses. Some might say that Honoka Kosuka is best girl given that she started the series as we know it. Some might say that Yoshiko is best girl because of her true Nibio persona and also being cute. Others would say that Nico Yazawa is best girl because of Nico Nico Ni. Obviously, these aren't the only reasons why fans would like these characters. This is just a handful. As for me, my favorite character in this series is what got me to become a fan in the first place. That character is none other than Chika Takami, the leader of the idol group Aqua. Before I start, please be noted that this video will contain some spoilers for the Love Life Sunshine anime. So if you have any intention on watching that, please do so first before watching this video. As for everyone else sticking around, please enjoy as I practically gush over why Chika is amazing. If you look up normal in the dictionary, you probably see a picture of me next to it. No matter what I did, I never stood out. To be fair, it never even really bothered me. Because if everyone is special, then nobody's special, right? By far and away, Chica's biggest insecurity is viewing herself as average compared to everyone around her. She's cute, but not the prettiest. She isn't dumb, but also not the smartest. She's fit, but not the most athletic. If one were to rank Aqua's lineup from first impressions alone, Chica probably wouldn't stand out much compared to the others. But if they were to look a little deeper into her character, their minds might just change. No offense, but this school idol thing seems kind of sudden. It does? Oh well, yeah, I mean, it's not like you've ever taken any sort of interest in club activities before, so what's the deal? Chika never stuck to a single club or activity, as many pointed out, most notably her best friend Yo Watanabe. Not through lack of trying. If she was going to do something, she had to give it her all. Chika just wasn't passionate enough about something until she discovered school idols, specifically being enamored with Muse. Like her, they were no different than the average high schooler, and yet they still seemed larger than life, performing at the Akiba Dome for all to see. For the first time in her life, Chika found something she was completely driven to do. To become something greater than herself. They captivated me. They inspired me. I know there are plenty of fans like What the What who view Chika's insecurity as self-hatred, and while it's not a bad interpretation, I don't think it's that serious. His video is still worth a watch, though. Seriously, you won't regret it. A lot of Chika's early actions follow similar beats to what happened when Muse was formed. This was both intentional and understandable. More often than not, when people are inspired by something or someone, they tend to resemble their influences in some manner. Many of the obstacles that Chika and the others faced were not that much different from what Honuka went through, seeming to reaffirm that she was on the right path, that it was fate. It could only be one thing. Fate. Luckily, Destiny stepped in and took charge. It gave me a push, and there it was. A domineering student council president, finding potential members, the danger of their school closing. All of these were faced by Muse in the past and only made Chiga's drive to continue that much stronger. But to say that was the only thing pushing her forward would be disingenuous to her character. Chika truly is passionate and determined to succeed, along with the rest of Aqua. And while she does come across as a bit pushy when recruiting new members, she knows what makes each and every one of them unique. Say what you will about her being normal and average, but she knows potential and talent when she sees it. When you talk about piano, I can tell you're super passionate about it. To the point where you jump into freezing waters just to write a song better. To be consumed by your very passion... To have a special dream? It didn't matter what others might think of them or how popular they might become because the most important thing is to show your favorite self, your shining self. Don't let it go. You have to love every single part of yourself, Yoshiko, including Yohane, the fallen angel. Regardless of these hurdles, Chika and the others continued pushing on, improving day after day, and eventually getting to perform at an idol event in Tokyo. This was it. They could probably show how much they've grown to a wider audience. Their PV launched them into the top 100 idol groups. That needed to cover something. But it wasn't until they saw the duo Saint Snow perform that Chika and the rest of Aqua realized how seriously other groups were taking this competition. They weren't discouraged, though, and pulled off their greatest performance yet. Not long after the results were in, Chika anxiously looks at their placement in the rankings, and... 
they failed. All that training and only getting better with time and they had nothing to show for it. You were fun to watch. Your song was lovely and the whole group performed well. <laughs> but I want to be honest with you. If you're trying to get into Love Live or be like Muse, save yourself the trouble and give it up. As harsh as Sarah's words were, she was right. Aqua's dedication was admirable, but only riding Muse's coattails would only leave them in the latter's shadow. She could try as putting on a strong front so as not to sadden Aqua any further, but it's clear that she's struggling to keep it together. How did this happen? We seem to do everything right, and we have nothing to show for it. I don't understand. It isn't fair. And this all comes to a head at the end of episode 8, where Riko Sakurauchi sees all of Chika's bottled up emotions burst forth. Her anger, her sorrow, her confusion. All the things that Chica went through throughout all these episodes up to this point makes her feel that much more alive. And her breakdown feels that much worse. We worked so hard, and it should have counted for something more. We practiced so much together, we made our costumes, our songs, and even that video. We pushed ourselves every day, and I can't understand why that wasn't enough. The only thing we wanted to do was go out there and shine. <laughs> I can't believe we ended up with a zero. A zero, no! <laughs> this is so frustrating. I don't care if it's different now than it used to be back then. It's not fair. We deserve so much more. <laughs> I just can't stand it. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the one who cheers you all up. I don't want to upset you more. I was the one who talked you all into this. We put ourselves out there and don't have anything to show for it. That's why I've got to keep going. <laughs> That's why I have to try. This is undoubtedly what I consider to be Chika Takami's lowest point in the series. Even in season two, nothing hits her as hard as this failure of the performance in Tokyo. And Rico reassures her that, no, everybody in Aqua decided to join on their own, not for Chica's sake, but because they wanted to do it. I mean, sure, Chica was the person that brought them together, but they joined Aqua of their own free will. Another thing that I feel that this scene exemplifies is how all the members of Aqua look up to Chica, despite how unique they are both on stage and off. Rico's skill at composition, Yo's skill at making costumes, Hanamaru's fascination with modern technology, Ruby practically being diabetes for all the senses, Yohane's fallen angel persona. Even later on when the third years join, Kanan's maturity, Mari practically being fun personified, and Daya absolutely spoiling her sister Rotten. All of them are so unique to her, and yet they look to the average person in the room as their leader and for guidance. For someone who sees herself as the most unnoteworthy and normal and average person in the room, Chica's place in Aqua's lineup is irreplaceable. And from that point onward, they all vow to keep improving and to change that score from zero to one or something greater. To keep trying and not give up. I did play the All-Stars app quite a bit before I started watching the anime, but this was the very moment in the series that made me so interested. And it was also the moment where I saw Chica as more than just an average girl and something that was very special to both the series and to me, as corny as that sounds. Without going into too much detail about what happens afterwards in the series, Chica only starts growing even more after that moment of episode 8, where she just becomes a much better leader, I'd argue even better than Honoka from the previous series, to the point where Muse is hardly mentioned at all in season 2, which shows how determined she is to make Aqua stand out from other idol groups. What Chika Takami represents, at least to me, is that you can try everything that you can. You can do everything right you can only improve with time and even despite all that you could still fail but after that comes the question what do you do after you fail do you just chalk it up to an experience and uh let bygones beat bygones 
or do you keep trying until you get the results that you want? And thankfully, Chica chooses the second option. Life pushes her, she pushes harder. An obstacle gets in her way, she finds a way to overcome it. And let me be honest, I never thought that I would think this much about a character or become so attached to one of them in something like an idol series. Love Live truly is greater than a lot of other series of its kind than it has any right to be. And the strength of its character building is part of the reason why I love it so much. And by extension, Chica as well. For those of you with knowledge of the series, maybe you see why some people like Chica so much. For those who decided to stick around, maybe I convinced you to give this series a try. But for all of you, I really hope you enjoy my take on this topic, and I'll see you in the next video. I hadn't ever been inspired to work toward anything before, but even I can make miracles. I'm learning to work hard and put in the effort. It sounds crazy, but this will bring out my best, so I can shine. Muse has done a lot for you. <laughs>